Hello, my music loving friends. For this craft, you are going to need paper. You can use all white paper if that's what you got. If you have any sort of construction paper or fun fancy paper, you might wanna use some of that also. So have both of those on hand. You will need scissors. You will need markers for decorating. And I've just chosen these colors, whatever colors you have or whichever colors you prefer, you can use those. And I have one black marker so that when I just wanna write words or something, I have something just nice and dark to write with. You are also going to need some glue. All right, now if you've ever made a fortune teller or a cootie catcher, then the first part of this video is gonna look really familiar to you, but stay tuned because I have figured out how to put an additional secret pocket into the fortune teller so we can put a little bit more information in there. So let me clear my space off, put all my supplies off to the side, and then I'm gonna talk you through how to make a fortune teller. So we take our piece of paper and we start with it portrait. So this is portrait and this is landscape. We are starting portrait. And then we're going to take our paper and we're going to fold it from the top right corner down. I suppose if you're left-handed you could do it the other way. The important part is to fold it from the corner straight down so that then this edge lines up with the other edge behind it. And then we're going to crease that nice and hard. Now, because I like to have my creases really firm, I'm going to use the handle of my scissors to press that crease down. There we go. Now, once I have this like this, I actually want to get rid of this piece. Now, some of y'all know a little shortcut that involves folding it and maybe licking the edge of it and ripping it off. But again, I like a really neat line. So I am going to use my scissors for that. So I'm cutting right along the edge. And then I'm going to set that little piece aside. That's a little piece of scratch paper for you. We won't need that for the rest of this craft. Okay. And now I have something that looks like this. So now I take that and turn it so I can fold it in this direction. And again, I'm gonna use the handle of my scissors to make a really nice crease there. Oh man, I didn't line my corners up perfectly on top. You know what that means? Absolutely nothing. There is no such thing as perfection in crafting. All right, so now we have this awesome diamond with some lines on it, and those lines are gonna guide us in how to fold the other folds. So I like to start with the bottom. So I'm taking the bottom part of my diamond and folding it up so that this corner touches the intersection of those lines, the place where they all come together. And then I'm gonna crease that. And I'm gonna wait and do my hard creases all at the end, just so I don't have to keep picking up my scissors. And then I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna fold the opposite corner. I like to do opposites. There we go. And then I'm gonna fold it again, this next corner, folding it up to the middle. And then I'm gonna fold it again up from here. Okay, so now that I have all of those folds in place, I'm turning it over. And this is a good time to crease all of those lines nice and firmly. All right, so now I have something that looks like this. So now I actually wanna do the same thing that I just did, but in reverse. So all of the little folds are facing down I'm going to make it into a diamond again, and then I'm going to fold my corners up to that middle intersection again, just like I did before. Make a nice crease there, a nice crease there, and a nice crease there. If I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause this video and do it in your own time. That is the beauty of video, my friends. All right. 
So there, now I have that. And of course I want to make all of my creases nice and firm. So now I have this and I want to flip it over so that I'm looking at what looks like four squares here. And to make it so that it's possible to use my fortune teller, I'm going to fold it in half this way and I'm gonna crease that center line. I'm gonna use my scissors again to press it down. And then I'm gonna open it up, turn it this way, fold it and crease the other way. All right. So now we have this basic fortune teller and let me show you how you open this up. You take it and you kind of hold it so you can see where the top opens up here and then grab these corners and push together. You see how it opens up and now all the corners are together and then I grab it in one hand and I find the little tabs at the bottom and I open them up one at a time. Okay. And now I have my basic fortune teller. Okay, now here is where the top secret information comes in. We need to make another one of these. Now you have a couple of options at this point because we want our crafts to look pretty, don't we? So either you're going to uh, use another piece of blank paper and eventually decorate or if you happen to have some fancy paper, maybe you have some construction paper, or maybe you have something ooh, fancy like this, you're gonna use some other kind of paper, if you have it, to make your next fortune teller. We're just gonna make another one like we just did. If all you have is white paper, well, that just gives you the opportunity to do a bunch of drawing and stuff later, okay? So let's make our next fortune teller the same way that we did before. So I'm setting this one aside. And then I'm folding, I'm putting it like this. I'm putting the, the interesting part down, actually. And then I'm folding from corner to corner. Strangely enough, my paper is square. My interesting paper is square. But if it weren't, I would have a little tab here and I would cut, 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 cut. And then I make my hard crease. And then I open it up, turn it this way, fold it back again, make my crease, make it firm. And again, I know I'm going kind of fast because I don't want this video to be super long, but you can always pause it and do this at your own pace, okay? Now I'm opening it up and again, I'm looking at the, the white side right now. So it doesn't have a lot of decoration on the inside, but that's because I'm gonna fold it up so that I can see the colorful side. So then I fold it this way. If you're using construction paper and both sides are colorful, that's also fine. That's not gonna, that's not gonna make your craft not work or something. All right, so there we go. You know what, I started creasing every line with the scissors. Man, I'm gonna have to pick my scissors up a bunch of times here. All right. Okay, so now I've got my first set of folds down. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm turning it over and I'm doing it again. Fold to the center, mash, mash, mash. Flip it, fold to the center, mash, mash, mash. Do that with all four of them. Make sure you pause the video if that was too fast. Okay, and now I want to mash all those with the scissors handle to make sure I have really solid creases. Ooh, you can see the sun coming in through my window now. That's nice. 
All right. So now, this is where the magic happens, my friends. So we actually don't need to fold this one up into the kind of cootie catcher format. We have our regular fortune teller and we have our colorful one. And if you just made another one that's white, that's totally fine. You can decorate that in just a moment. You'll see where it's gonna go in your uh, fortune teller in just a moment. Let's actually open this one back up. So I'm laying it flat and then I'm gonna open up like one little tab of it for now. Now, when I open this one, you can see there's a little triangle of folded paper here and it's kind of the same size as that one, isn't it? So what I wanna do is turn this and you see where this line is right here, this fold line? I'm gonna cut just above that. Watch your fingers while you're cutting. So I'm cutting that off of my other fortune teller. And then I'm going to turn it so that these little folds are facing up because I want to be able to open it once it's glued down. And then that's going to get glued in to this tab right here. Okay, so I'm going to do that so you can see what that looks like. Okay, when you are, so I have my folds here and here's the flat side with no cuts or folds in it. When you are gluing, you do not need a ton of glue. And if you use a ton of glue, your project's not gonna look as good in the end. So I like to put just a little bit along the edges and I even like to flatten that out with my finger. So it'll be nice and smooth when I put it down. Okay, so now I'm putting that right in here and now my fortune teller has a secret pocket. Look at that. And it opens up. Oh, I mashed it a little too hard. A little bit of rearranging to be done. There we go. Okay. And I'm gonna repeat that for all of these tabs. So I fold this one up. I take my creative looking one Cut, cut, cut. Make sure I know where the fold is because I, I want that to open. Flip that over. Add some glue to the edges. Smooth that out. And then stick it on to the other one. You notice that I'm opening up that fold when I mash it down. I just think it's easier to get it to mash down. Sometimes you have to be careful that you don't move it around too much. But again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a craft. All right, so we do the other two. Open this up. Cut above the fold. Make sure I know where my opening is. Little bit of glue. Mm -hmm. There we go. Stick that one down. Okay. And then final side. I'm not cutting right on the fold for these. Remember, I'm trying to cut a little bit below the fold. And that one, actually, I cut a little bit too much on the fold. And so I'm trimming a little bit off because I think my project will look neater at the end. All right, finding my opening here. Putting a little bit of glue on. Mm-hmm. There we go. All right. And then sticking that one down. You do want to make sure with this one, because you're going to be folding it back up, that you haven't gotten any extra glue kind of around where you meant to, because you'll glue the whole thing shut. That won't work very well. So now I'm kind of checking to make sure that I didn't put glue where I don't want it. 
okay? And now I have this awesome looking fortune teller. Now, if you did this with all white paper, then now is your time to do some decorating on these tabs. So you can see how mine looks, and I just used other like creative kind of paper. You could have used any kind of color paper you want or plain paper, but now would be the time to draw some pictures or do some coloring on those. This would be a good time to pause the video and do that if you're deciding to go that route. All right, cello and bass players. We are gonna move on to the next step. You might have noticed that my paper changed colors here. Well, that's because I used the polka dotted one for the violin player, so you guys get this awesome pattern here. All right, so we've drawn all of our staff lines in, and the next thing that we're gonna do is draw a bunch of clef signs. So when you play either cello or bass or any other really low sounding instrument, we use a bass clef sign. So I'm gonna teach you how to draw that, and then we're gonna draw it on every little piece of staff that we have here, all right? So the bass clef is best drawn by starting with a little dot or circle around the second from the top line right here, all right? And then I like to start from the right side of that dot and I go, let me see if I can get this real close. I go spiraling out, down and around, and then your spiral straightens out, so it ends up looking like that, okay? And then we just add two little dots. Now that one's kind of big, and that's fine for the first one, but I am gonna actually try to make mine smaller because I won't be holding it up here to show you on camera. But we're gonna draw one of those on every single one of our pieces of staff here. So we draw our little circle, spiral, and around. Yeah, that'll work. It, they don't look identical, and I want you to get used to right now that your clef signs are not always going to look perfect and identical. I do mine in pen so that I'm not tempted to go back and fix every single detail of it, because that makes the craft less fun, quite frankly. All right, so now I've rotated my fortune teller, and I am putting my little circle, spiraling around, adding my two dots. Oh, that's a good one. I am going to celebrate that. All right. And then I'm on to the next one. Now you notice I'm going at a speed consistent with my ability to draw these, such as it is. But if you find that you are getting behind or if you're ahead, you can pause or you can move through this part of the video at your own speed. All right, draw my dot, spiral around, add two additional dots. Now I'm rotating, I'm halfway done with my cleft signs here. All right, little dot. Spiral around. Each one has its own unique quality, doesn't it? You should see the treble clefts I drew for the violin players. Those are all over the place. All right. And then again, a little dot. Spiral around. Dot, dot. And I got one more to do here. Dot. Okay, so once you're done with your clef signs, your finished product looks like this. You have eight clef signs, and then you're ready to go on to the actual note drawing portion of the craft. All right, so now we are drawing the notes of the D major scale, and if you are a cello player, your D string is situated very conveniently on the very middle line of the staff. So in this first little section right here, we're gonna draw a whole note, and it is going to circle the middle line of the staff, all right? Now this secret pocket up here is because when you play with this, you wanna have the answer to what that note is in your secret pocket. So open that up. We already know that that's a D. I said that's your D string, so go ahead and write the letter D in there. And then, Oh, I drew my D funny. Oh, well. All right. So, and then we're going to write what finger on what string. So this is zero fingers on the D string. We call that an open string. So if somebody says open D, that's also the correct answer. Okay. All right. Then close the secret tab. All right. So now every time you want to add a finger to the string or go up a letter in the alphabet, you're going up to the next line or space on the staff. So if your D is situated here on this middle line, then the E is in the space above that. So I'm going to draw a whole note 
in that space. Boom, right there. Okay, D, E. And that means in my secret tab, I open it up, I write the letter E, and that is played with one finger on the D string. Okay, so your answer looks like this. Let's close that up. Now, as a cello player, you know that you don't use your second finger if you are just starting out. Your second finger comes along a little bit later. So this next note is the third finger note that you play on the D string. And that one, in your beginning orchestra or beginning cello lessons, it's typically an F sharp, all right? So an F sharp, the sharp sign looks like this, and we're gonna draw that first, so we make sure we have line, and it goes around the second line from the top, and so does the note that it goes with. So my F sharp looks like this, it's on the second line from the top, and then I'm gonna put my answer in the secret pocket. When we draw F sharp like this, with the, or with the letter name, we put the sharp sign next to the note to the right, all right? It looks like a hashtag, it looks like a number sign, but in music it's called sharp. And for you on the cello, that's played with three fingers on the D string. Okay, let's go on to our next note. We just did an F sharp, so our next note must be a G. And that occurs in the top space of the staff here. Open your secret tab. The letter name is a G, as we just said, and that's played with four fingers on the D string, right? Okay, so now you've run out of fingers on the D string. So that must mean that our next note is the A string. And the A string is located right on that top line, a step up from where the G was. Kind of looks like we've run out of lines and spaces. I'm gonna show you how to fix that as we go, all right? In your secret pocket, you're gonna write the A, and of course that's played with zero fingers on the A string. All right, closing that up. The next note goes in the space above the staff, so it looks like it's sitting right on top of the staff. So the A was circling the top line, this one is sitting on top of the top line. So this is a B. So let's write our answer, and this is a B and that's played with one finger on the A string. All right, closing, rotating. All right, so now this next note, we're gonna need to add something. This is called a ledger line. It's kind of like putting an extension on a ladder or something, we're just adding lines to the staff. So draw a little line above the staff like so. And then your next note is going to go around that. It kind of looks like Saturn with, a ring, with its rings going around it, all right? But of course, that's your third finger on the A string. And in your orchestra class, that's probably typically a C sharp. So that needs a little sharp sign in front of it, like so. So let's put our answer in the secret pocket. We called it a C sharp and it's played with three fingers on the A string. All right, got one more note. We need another, we need that ledger line again here because again, we are out of lines on the, the regular part of the staff. So I draw my extra line and I put the note on top of it this time. So this was on the line, this is above the line in the space above. And this one is the high D if you're playing a D major scale, it's the highest note that you play, and that's played with four fingers on the A string. All right, so now you have all of your uh, notes of your D major scale in there, all the answers are in for you, and I'm gonna show you how you play with this thing now. So hold these down and fold it back up. If you don't hold these, you might crumple them up, which isn't that big a deal, you can straighten it back out, but it's just easier if you hold and fold. Hold and fold. All right, so now you've got all of that folded and you're gonna fold it from here to here one more time and give it a really solid crease. Okay. All right. And now we are going to turn it so that we see that open at the top, opening at the top. Push that together, ooh, that's fun, good. And now, while I'm holding it at the top, I'm gonna give these another hard crease. Just because I want everything to be pliable 
and ready to go. Okay, so now we open up the tabs, open this one. All right, we open the next one. I'm gonna rearrange my grip so that now my fingers are holding over here so I can open up this one and this one, okay? So now you have your fortune teller and here's how you play with it. You go, you ask your friend or whoever you're playing with to pick a word. Let's say they pick cello because you guys are cello players. Then you spell it together while you're working the fortune teller. Well, cello is spelled C-E-L-L-O. -L -L All right, and then we get into here and then some, the, the, the person you're quizzing picks a note, all right? Maybe they pick this one. This one looks fancy, right? Well, your teacher probably taught you that that's one E and a, uh, or Mississippi, or motorcycle. Could be a lot of things, but it's gonna have that kind of quick pattern to it, and it's got four little uh, notes in it, okay? So you are going to work the fortune teller in that pattern and go one E and a. Uh. Oh, that brought us back to the same thing. So then they're going to pick another one. All right, and you go one. Oh, I forgot to say the answer. This is a dotted half note. So we go one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, and now we pick another one, and this is where the game changes a little bit. You pick it, you open this up, and because they picked this one, the person's gonna identify that note. They're gonna say the letter name and how it's played. That's pretty tricky. So this one has a little sharp sign by it. That actually helps me to identify it, doesn't it? So I see that this is on that second line down from the top. So I think that that makes it an F sharp. Hmm. And if that's right, then I would play that with three fingers on the D string. Let's see if I'm right. Ta-da, I am. And if you're, if the person being quizzed gets it right, you gotta celebrate somehow. You could do a high five, or you can say yay, but you gotta make sure that you celebrate in some way. Of course, if they make a mistake, no penalty, you just do it again. All right, happy practicing.